Welcome back to Short Scale Modelling. This is part 10 of Tamiya's US Aircraft Carrier Enterprise CVM 65. Scale is 1 to 350. In this part, I'm going to be mainly concentrating on the support vehicles. So, uh, from painting to getting them built. So, let's jump into this and see how well I get on. Starting off with the support vehicles. And as you can see, I'm painting these on the sprue. And I'm using Tamiya's X8 Lemon Yellow. Now, this, these are going to need at least two to three coats, um, possibly more. But the initial coats are going down now. Don't often use this yellow. I, I find this yellow a little bit weak uh, for um, these sort of things. But um, I, I thought this time around I, I would give it a proper go and see how well I get on. What's underneath the masking tape there is just a... Uh, one of the support vehicles that came off the sprue and so I know the exact number where it is I've just taped it on with a little bit of masking tape and replaced it onto the sprue and, and then to paint it, I've left it on the tape and just to paint it as you can see For the tyres I'm using Tamiya's XF1 flat black and all the tyres will be the same colour and the hubcap area is a uh, Umbro 127 US Course Grey the windows is Tamiya's XF63 German Grey. Now I've done the German Grey instead of the black just for um, the contrast with the tyres. And that will be the same combination for all the support vehicles. So the yellow, the tyres and the windows when they have them. Before I carry on with the build, I've been asked to show a little bit more of, about these cotton jigs for the um, masking tape. Because I didn't go into great detail. So, uh, first of all, these are from a company called Infinia Easy Cut Type, uh, and it's a Taipei, this one. And uh, what they do is, if, if I go up to the camera, you can see these uh, marks on here. If we go right in, we'll try and zoom in, you can just about make out the vertical marks and horizontal marks. And um, as you can see there, I've placed tape on them. And what I do is, I get a knife. Uh, sharp blade is preferable and uh, I just cut along the groove now when, when I put my tape on I have it all overlaid and then I'll use say this as a starting point and just pull my knife over it to tidy everything up so I've got a nice square start of, of my masking tape and if I want to cut a uh, straight off I just take a bit of tape uh, get a starting point I always start away from the tape and then I'll just gently pull my knife through now these are little groove, grooves these black marks that's like the channel so your knife will stay in the same position and you can just gently pull it through and then you, you lift it up and this will give you an extreme thin bit of tape. Now, on this particular jig, um, you have different sizes. It starts off slightly wider, and as you come down, it goes into a thinner, thinner, thinner strip until you've got a very, very, very thin strip of masking tape. Now, this is the one I use most of all, the A. However, there's a... a I have another three jigs. Now, I don't know whether there's only four in total, but I, I have four of them in total. So, I have the B. As you can see, I've already had some tape on here. This was over from my um, Enterprise build. But it has a, a circle here, um, with uh, this decreasing um, areas to cut through until you get to this point. Um, these are like a diamond shaped, so you can cut... Um, triangles or um, interesting geometrical shapes as you're going along you don't have to cut a triangle or just a square you can have all different uh, configurations next we have the C now as you can see no pun intended this is uh, for a circular one this is very good for Aztec detailing on um, Star Trek ships like the Enterprise and all. You can see the sweeping curve there. So that's excellent if, if you want um, 
must contain for a curved area. Now, if I should say, if um, you haven't got, say, a flat piece of tape like this, um, this is an 80mm tummy, 80mm tape, you can put your normal 6 mil or whatever tape you have in a hand, 10mm, 6mm, whatever. Just lay it over, press it in uh, really tight, and then use your coin uh, angle there. Just make sure that you've got it in a nice, clean, straight set before you start, so that you can take your, your blade into the tape, not onto the tape, then cut. It just makes life a little bit easier. So that's the C, and then you have the D. Now the, the D is just a little bit more like the B, but uh, more detailed there. But you also have these ones up here, uh, and these are great for um, rundowns and uh, things like that for uh, masking insignias. Oh. Um, I haven't actually used this one yet, but um, it's there. It's the same as here, so that's more for your round hour, I suppose, because of a perfect circular shape. You know, yeah. So, but once you get used to these and using these, I find that they're a really necessary uh, tool to have, and um, they just save you a lot, a lot of time. And you can mask off lots of different areas with very thin bits of tape. Um, so I would recommend them. I'm sure there's other companies that do do these. Um, I never recommend a single company, but um, I I use these ones and they're fine. As I say, there's probably other ones out there. Anyway, let's get back to the build. Everything's painted and dried. It's time for assembly, but there is a, a little bit of cleanup to do first of all. Um, one of the major sticking points of this kit, I think, is the connection points on the spring, especially for the smaller parts. They're quite heavy and uh, they do need um, a lot of trimming up once you've taken them off the spring. Now, I was going to show you this process earlier, uh, but I thought it'd be better wait until um, the support vehicles. So I'm having to extensively clean these as I go along and I'm using my hobby knife to do that. Now, you the re recommended way to do it, of course, is using uh, a, a file and gradually bring it down. I just happen to use a hobby knife. If you do do it that way, just be extremely careful, uh, especially on the thinner parts, because there is a chance that you can go through them. I would say so, as long as it's an older kit, they're like this. The newer kits don't really have the, that problem as such. Uh, the moulds are a lot better. But because this is an older mould, um, you are going to run into these little difficulties. So once it's all cleaned, I'm just going to be repainting it. And it's a good job really, because I forgot to uh, paint the inside of the uh, crane anyway. So um, I took that opportunity then to do it. So now it's time to place these uh, assemble the so support vehicle, the smaller ones I should say. And as you can see, these are two halves. They're, they're pushed together. Now I'm using a clamp for these uh, because the lines were slightly offset and they were leaving little bits of gaps. But uh, putting them under a bit of a clamp um, helped solve that problem. And it was the same with the main crane as well. I think it was more just for the block design of them than the mould itself. But overall, it's not a massive issue. Um, an experience to um, expert builder will be able to sort them out. If you're a beginner, it may be a bit of an issue for you. But I would recommend this kit for a beginner anyway. But I'll, I'll go into that uh, near the end of the build. So I'm carrying on uh, placing these uh, together. Um, there's three different types of support vehicles here. There's the, the crane one, the top loader, which I'm doing there and then the, the main tug um, truck that I'm building. The, this one um, has the uh, front um, bumper and windscreen needs to be added to it. Um, that just gets pushed on. It lines up quite nicely. There's no location points as such for these, so you, you do have to judge it by eye. Even though there's no location points for them, they're quite an easy assembly. Um, Doing it by eye, it shouldn't be a problem. The the, the wheels, um, the, these just get uh, pushed on a little bit of cement right in the centre, and uh, there's a 
the location points for these are, are fairly simple. It's just a little axle that you push them onto. Um, I'm not sure whether you actually need uh, cement for these, but um, I, I put in cement just to keep in case anyway, because they're not going to be free moving around the deck or on my kit. Um, unless you're having a complete motorised uh, ship, you, you would cement them. So I'll just carry on building these, and this is where I'll end part 10. Uh, there's uh, not much more to do to these four vehicles, just little pages, uh, touch shops and so on. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other builds. If you subscribe to the channel, please do so. Make sure you hit the notification bell, that way you'll be kept up to date, not only with this build, but all of my other builds. Hit the like button, don't be afraid to leave a comment, and of course you can share the video. But for now, thank you very much for watching, bye bye.